a university student becomes the target of the very killer legend that she's investigating, Candyman. Hello and welcome back to Fatal Film, a watch-along horror movie video series where every two weeks I give you guys a horror movie, and then we sit down and we talk about it. This week we watch the 1992 horror film Candyman. So the movie starts off with this like bit of dialogue with Candyman kind of narrating. He's got like this, he's got like this chilling, haunting voice. It's like raspy, but super deep. What's blood for? If not for shedding. And just like Tony Todd's delivery, man, I'll, I'll cut you from your growing to your gullet. God damn! With my hook for a hand, I'll split you from your groin to your gullet. So the movie follows university student Helen, who's investigating Candyman for her thesis for university. And she's doing this in collaboration with her friend Bernadette. Their research leads them to this building in this very, like, poor, shady part of Chicago. And Helen, being white, she's she's not exactly greeted with open arms amongst, like, the pretty much all-black community. And Helen and Bernadette, like, they know it's dangerous, but I guess they, they really want to nail this thesis. You know, she keeps saying, we have, we have a real shot here to do something kind of unique and interesting. The movie's actually quite racially charged in nature, even, like, even the origin of Candyman himself. He was a black man in the 1800s who ended up having an affair with a white woman, and as a result, a group of white men cut off his hand, stripped him naked, covered in the honeycomb of a hive of angry bees, and then burned him alive. I'd be pissed too, shit. And while investigating this building, it's like so dank and dilapidated, but people are actually still living here, which is kind of crazy. So they, they break into like this unoccupied suite where apparently Candyman once killed somebody. And man, this place is so gross. A lot of these sets that they created for this movie, it feels so grimy and so dirty. It's got such a gross feeling about it. While investigating the building, Helen and Bernadette, they meet this young mother named Anne-Marie, and she's got like this newborn son, his name is Anthony. And at first Anne-Marie's kind of defensive, but you know, after talking it out, she invites them in, and you know, she actually, you know, she's a nice, regular, down-to-earth person. She's just really in a tough situation, just trying to get by. And she offers, you know, what information she has on Candyman and the murders that took place in that apartment building. And Helen, this whole time, she's quite, she's quite bold with her investigation. You know, she's trespassing, breaking into places. You know, at one point, she, she kind of tricks, like, a local boy into helping her out. And this young boy, he ends up taking Helen to this, this, like, public washroom, this really dank-ass public washroom in a park, where apparently Candyman once, once cut off this dude's dick. Not even joking, a fate worse than death. So Helen, she's checking out the, the washroom, she's taking pictures, and while she's in there, she gets confronted by Candyman and his goons. Except it's not the real Candyman. It was actually like this local gang boss who kind of like took up the Candyman name, I guess, based on the local legend. He even went so far as to like use a hook and such. And so they attack the shit out of Helen, she gets fucked up. Her face gets mangled. They pretty much leave her to die right there on the men's room floor. I'm just like, damn. But she ends up surviving. And the Candyman wannabe ends up getting caught. He ends up getting arrested. And the movie, the movie even acknowledges the fact that it, it took a white woman getting attacked in order for something to actually be done and for them to actually arrest this guy. So Helen, she's kind of traumatized, but, you know, her spirits get lifted because Bernadette ends up recovering all of the lost, lost photos and their research and their investigation is actually going quite well. And, you know, Helen's feeling pretty good. And this is about halfway through the film and we haven't seen one glimpse of Candyman up until this point. And then, shit takes a hard left turn. So Candyman ends up revealing himself to Helen for the very first time in this parking lot, like, halfway through the film. And Helen, this whole time, she's kind of, like, mesmerized. She's kind of, like, almost in a trance because she can't really believe what she's seeing, what she's hearing. And then, next thing she knows, she's back in Anne Marie's apartment, you know, the nice lady who helped them out earlier in the film. And she's covered in blood, and she doesn't know what's going on, she has no recollection. This is such a shocking and, like, disturbing scene because there's, there's just blood everywhere. And Anne Marie, you can hear her shrieking, you can hear her screaming and crying. Anthony, her baby, is gone. And then, super sad, her, her dog's dead. You know, his head got decapitated. It's like, god damn, this scene. So Anne Marie, she's got this stranger Helen in her apartment. Her baby's missing. There's blood everywhere. Her dog is dead. She ends up attacking Helen, but Helen ends up getting a hold of the cleaver. And then the cops come in, and of course they arrest Helen. And for real, shit, shit does not look good. <laughs> it does not look good for Helen. 
and they're interrogating Helen, asking her what the hell happened, and she doesn't mention anything about the Candyman thing. She's just, she's sticking to her story that she doesn't remember anything. And then, the very next day, she gets released. She gets fucking released, which is crazy to me. It's not enough to break and enter, it's not enough to kill the dog, and you know, the baby's missing. Nah, they, they let her out, it's fine. I'm just like, what? So Helen's now alone in her apartment. She's like even more traumatized than she was before. You know, she's been attacked. She's seen Candyman. She doesn't know what the hell. She thinks maybe she did something terrible to this baby. She doesn't remember. She doesn't know. So she sees Candyman in her apartment. She grabs a knife. She's ready to defend herself. And then Bernadette comes and visits her at her apartment. You know, she's got flowers. She's coming to check in on her best friend. And then, no, Bernadette gets killed by Candyman in Helen's apartment. And then when she comes to, you know, the police are already there. She's, she's already in handcuffs. Bernadette's dead body is in her living room. And she can't believe it. And they end up admitting her to a psychiatric hospital and they, and they heavily sedate her. Candyman is being very, like, he's being very precise. He's not, he's not killing Helen. He killed, he killed Bernadette. You know, he's doing all this, no problem. But no, he's got other plans for Helen. Her death would be a tale to frighten children, to make lovers cling closer in their rapture. Come with me. Again, things things are not looking good for Helen. And you know, while she's at this psychiatric hospital, she's she's like strapped to the you know she's strapped to the table and everything like that. And it's kind of like it's kind of like a freaky scene because imagine just being strapped in, imagine being strapped into that table and then you know Candyman's there and you got. You got your arms pinned to your side, you can't do anything to defend yourself. Eventually she gets brought in and she's meeting with the doctor there at the hospital. You know, he's asking her questions and, you know, he doesn't believe her. He thinks, he thinks that she's insane. But she's all like, I'll show you right now, I can summon him. And so she says it five times. And at first nothing happens and I gotta admit, this scene was kind of badass. She says it five times and then, BAM! <laughs> Again, more blood seemingly on Helen's hands, but she actually ends up breaking out. She like climbs through the window. She knocks out a nurse. She's really, she's in like desperation mode. Once she breaks out, the very first place she goes is back home where she finds her husband and like his new girlfriend. God damn. This was kind of hinted at earlier in the movie that, you know, he kind of had eyes on this, this other younger girl, but it's like, God damn, this man, this man had zero patience. And they're like terrified when Helen shows up at the apartment because, you know, she's she's suspected of killing like a couple people at this point. And she's really like, she's really letting her crazy show. Realizing she has nowhere to go, she basically seeks out Candyman. So she goes back to the apartment where her investigation led her in the first place. And what's kind of funny is she, she finds him. <laughs> she finds Candyman. He's just there sleeping. He's just chilling. I'm just like, what? <laughs> and Candyman wakes up and, you know, they have kind of like an exchange. And Candyman explains basically what he wants from her because again he's not he's not trying to kill helen right well i guess he is but he's got bigger plans for helen because if he wanted to kill her he could just gut her just like that from growing to cullen right but no what he's trying to do is basically breed another urban legend kind of like him kind of like himself so that's why he's trying to make it seem like she's a killer and he wants he wants to remove all like will to live from her and kind of like accept death you know that's why he kept saying you know be my victim be my victim. And he's explaining that she'll have more power and she'll basically be immortal because she'll she'll live as a folktale, as folklore, as a legend, like he is. And that's basically his motivation. He wants her to become like his partner. He just he just is looking for a relationship. He just wants a friend, you know, maybe with benefits. So their relationship is actually kind of interesting and you know some of their dialogue exchange, it's almost like she's contemplating it. We have a bargain. I'm afraid. Do you feel the pain? Or what is beyond? The pain, I can assure you, will be exquisite. But she is also resisting at the same time. So Candyman uses little baby Anthony, you know, Anne Marie's missing baby. He basically uses him as bait and, you know, puts the baby in like this unlit bonfire. So Helen, she wants to go and rescue this baby. Maybe it'll give her a little bit of redemption. So Helen, she crawls into the unlit bonfire, into the, the pit of debris. And the young boy who had helped Helen earlier in the movie, you know, he thinks that he thinks that he spots Candyman inside of the inside of the pile of debris. So he gathers the community and they light it. And they're all chanting and cheering, thinking that they're burning Candyman and getting rid of him. 
And while inside the bonfire amongst all the flames, you know, Helen kind of confronts Candyman one last time and, you know, in her last, last ditch effort, you know, attempts to save the baby. And in the process, she gets like burnt to shit and she's lost all of her hair and she's all charred and blistered, but she saves the baby and she ends up taking the baby out of the bonfire as she dies. So Helen, yes, she ends up dying, but she kind of becomes the opposite of what Candyman was, right? Because Candyman's a local legend, but for like the wrong reasons, because he was a killer and because he's evil. And Helen goes down as a local legend because she saved this baby and the whole community, they end up, you know, attending her funeral. So it looks like the movie seemingly has a happy ending, but but the movie ends with a shot of Helen's boyfriend, Trevor, and he's in the bathroom, and even though he moved on to a new girl already, you know, they were husband and wife, and he did love her, and you know, he's, he's just looking at the mirror, and he ends up saying her name five times. And after he does that, she appears behind him, and she's all burnt and shit, and then that's it, credits roll, and it's just like, God damn! So she ended up becoming what Candyman wanted in the end anyways. But that's pretty much it for the plot of Candyman. And goddamn, this movie, I actually like this movie quite a bit. You know, Tony Todd, in particular, as Candyman, so iconic. Just the voice, just like the visual appearance of him. Just like that pimp-ass coat and the hook for a hand. My man kills in style. It's such a simple design, but he's still like super creepy and it's very effective. Tony Todd is like, no doubt, become a horror icon, mainly in part because of this movie. You know, if you look at his IMDb page, this man has been in like a million horror movies. Goddamn, but of course, none more impactful on his career than Candyman. We know that Jordan Peele is doing a Candyman reboot, and it's gonna be kind of strange if Tony Todd's not in it in some capacity. Again, I really like this movie. I thought the pacing was legit. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. While I was watching this film, you know, Candyman, he doesn't appear until like halfway through the movie. I thought for sure. Do you know what? Fucking Helen was doing all this shit. Helen did kill all these people. That's what I was thinking. Of course, this movie got sequels and all that, so it's probably not the case. But I was really thinking that, like, okay, people didn't start dying until after Helen got attacked in the public washroom, like halfway through the movie. So my thought was like, okay, that attack in the public washroom, that must have like triggered some sort of like mental thing in her brain and she kind of became unhinged because of that. Like, that's what I was thinking. Like, man, that attack, that must have like knocked a few screws loose and Maybe she did do all of this shit. Maybe she is just seeing Candyman and he doesn't actually exist. I think that would be a really cool twist and, you know, looking looking at this movie with that perspective, it's actually kind of interesting. But then of course there's the sequels and then the ending wouldn't really make sense. But like, you know, I was really convinced there for a short while. And the music in this movie is pretty haunting, pretty chilling. It's got like, like the organs and like the church choir thing going on. It gives the movie a pretty unique feel. And the movie tackles some pretty sensitive stuff. Again, a lot of it has to do with race and I, I think they handled it pretty well. I like this movie a lot. I give this like a 7.5 out of 10. Anyways, let me know what you guys thought of Candyman, the 1992 horror film. It's like the first in a, I think a trilogy of 90s horror movies starring Tony Todd as Candyman. I might check those out at some point further on down the road. But for next episode, a fatal film this movie is celebrating its 10th anniversary and i remember watching this when it first came out it's the only time i've ever seen it haven't watched it since we are watching sam raimi's drag me to hell thank you guys so much for watching peace out